redoing a video that I did um, a couple nights ago. I want to talk to you about the reason I started my YouTube. I should be in the gym right now, really. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I want to redo it because it looked awful. Like You could barely see my face and I looked drugged out because of the lighting and lighting issues are like ridiculous so I'm in the sun right now there's sun on me um anyway I started this YouTube because I had a mental illness I was diagnosed with a mental illness and there was a lot of crazy stuff happening to me um, and I didn't know what to do about it because I spent my whole life just a normal girl nothing nothing was ever in my head nothing ever ever that telepathy thing never happened to me. I never experienced a damn thing until I was like 30 years old. And um, so, I mean, if it happened, I don't remember it because I may have been a little girl. I don't know. But um, like uh, I was 30. It was 2010, 2011 when I started experiencing weird things and it was making me very upset. I went mad, like I got really angry about it and I was like throwing things, punching holes in the walls and injuring myself really over this stuff, crying and crying. It was crazy. It was a crazy, crazy year in my life. The first year that I started experiencing mental illness. Um, so I... I will make the long story short. Eventually, I was um, diagnosed with schizophrenia, and I was in denial. I was like, "That's not. That can't be me. It's not a possibility. That is impossible. I am normal, and the most normal person I know. This is like." Anyway, I went through a whole thing about it. I've talked about it on YouTube before. The, the bad things to say when you go into the doctor's office and how you could end up in the hospital by mistake. Anyway, they sent me in for evaluation as if I was dangerous or something and um, they kept me there for three days. But um, I went home and just like anybody else, I wanted to document my life. YouTube was becoming really, really popular. Everybody was doing a YouTube about their life. At the time, the big popular thing was like um, documenting your life. I don't know why, but everybody wanted to have their own reality shows. So I started doing the same thing and mine really wasn't that interesting because I was so crazy. Um, so, uh, yeah. And I wanted to do everything that YouTubers do. I didn't pick like one thing to get really good at or, um, you know, one type of video, the reactions, the videos or the makeup videos or whatever it is. I didn't pick that one thing to do. I wanted to do everything on YouTube, everything that I could possibly do and see what works for me. Cause I don't know what people want to see me do, you know, but I am an artist. I sing, I dance, I write music and other things. I'm a storyteller. I like to, um, like tell funny stories but I don't consider myself a comedian I wanted to be a comedian for a long time and I'm just too scared to do stand up I think it's really um possibly the most scary thing you could do is I don't know why out of all the things I sing on stage I dance on stage I cannot I cannot be up there telling jokes I don't know why but anyway so I could do them on video on YouTube and I tried that and um, basically I just wanted to document my illness and every now and again I would talk to you about my mental illness or about what I do to um, help myself and in the beginning I was studying so much about um, 
schizophrenia and what I was going to go through in my future, what it was going to look like and what the possibilities are for me. And and then when you get really deep into it, like um, what you're supposed to do financially, because at that point it could not, literally could not hold a job. So there's no way I could have worked at the time. The first five years of my illness, I was not an able person, literally disabled, mentally, like it was impossible. <laughs> I started getting scared of people because I thought they were going to hurt me. I thought I was scared to watch movies because the way they affected the things in my head, watching movies and watching TV and even listening to the radio were hard for me. So I spent a lot of time alone in the dead silence doing nothing and I just got sick of it one day I um I went to college tried to enter in college maybe I'll go back for my education well um I ended up getting in a fight in right after class with some chick because I thought she was stealing from me and um my mom's like okay maybe Maybe being with a lot of people isn't a good idea with you for you right now. Maybe it's not a, the place for you right now. <laughs> Sometime in the future, but not right now. So we um, cut the idea of college out of my life. I'm not going to do that ever again. Um, for a lot of different reasons. It's not just the fact that I got in a fight. I mean, I'm really not that of a aggressive kind of a person. I'm not a fight starter. That's not who I am. But um, it was for other reasons, the things that go in my head, the way um, I have to retain information and the involvement I get with other people as far as learning something new. Um, it was really hard for me in school. I do much, much better learning on my own. So I went back to get my high school diploma and it was independent study. So they would give me all my work and I would take it home, come back a week later with everything finished. They would review it and grade me. I would take a test and then they'd give me more work and the same thing every week. So it was a lot easier for me to work on myself in books and on the computer and I've always known that because I took independent study in real high school when I was in actual high school as a teenager so that's how I work I work better by myself which is possibly why am I dancing I'm doing solos but it's different with dancing and my art um partners the being with a partner is easier because you have somebody to feed off of it's really it's a whole different world like people who compare education like uh, academic education with um arts the fine arts and um that kind of world i know you take it in college but it's a whole different thing the way you learn it the way the mind has to process the information it's different and I'm proof of that because I literally could not what I do in dance. I couldn't do it in college. <laughs> I could. And then if I did, I think it would just drive me nuts. It would just like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. I might try to explain that sometime in the future about the stuff in my head and what I go through that makes it so hard to get through school. Um, I didn't have the problem in high school. Didn't have that problem in my 20s, but I had it in my 30s. Um, anyway, so I started studying a lot about my illness. And when I started getting into the future, what the illness looked like, it just drove me nuts. And I ended up being able to watch less and less of it. Um, I started thinking maybe I should be doing the opposite. I don't know how I got this idea in my brain, but I started studying, literally studying, how people who do not suffer with mental illness 
live their lives. I started watching and observing and um, thinking about the people in my family, for starters, who were not suffering from mental illness. Because it runs in my family, but the people who were not suffering, what is the difference? How did they deal with these situations? I wouldn't say that it's better, but I would say it's, they deal with it differently. And their minds work differently about it. So everything from deaths in the family, I took death so hard, so hard. It, it would take me like a year of grieving. I could not handle it. And I would watch people just go on with their life like nothing. <laughs> So I really had a lot of studying and observing to do, and I asked a lot of questions. People like my mom, who's very successful in her job, in her career, and who I never got along with. I started maybe, maybe I should have some respect for her because she's not crazy. I'm crazy, but she's not crazy. And she has one of the most difficult jobs in the country. I can't tell you what that is. But so... I started talking to her a lot about life and how she deals with things and I watched her and I listened carefully to her and how she developed relationships with people and the difference between the way she was at work and the way she was at home. All those little things, I just really paid attention to it and um, I don't act like her. I'm not like my mom. We're two different people. We don't do things the same. We don't act the same. We don't talk the same. Nothing. I'm surprised that we can even get along sometimes. But um, there are some things that I picked up on. There are some things that I learned from her. Um, for myself. I'm not going to tell you what they are because everybody is different. Everybody will want to be different this, this is just the things that worked for me you're supposed what I think you should do is realize that you need to study people who are not suffering and only pick up on the things that you like from those people I'm not saying Forget about your friends who su who suffer from mental illness because I knew a lot of people. I was in groups and stuff like that, but I really literally stopped going to those groups. And when I stopped going to those groups, I just got better. I, I am not the advocate for those kinds of things. I think it helps in the beginning stages to help you be around people. But um, the more you do that, it's like the more you have the mindset of like, this is the group that I belong in. And if you want to get better and be part of society, you, I hate to say this sounds so awful. I understand that. But you have to be putting yourself in groups that you want to be a part of. Like if you want a job and you take the bus, you don't have a car, go on the bus stop, talk to people who are on their way to work and ask them how they got the job. Ask them about their job and you'll get the hint of how they talk and how they react to things and what differences it makes in their life. and. You'll get tidbits of information. So if you have the courage to be like talking to strangers, you should be doing that. That's my piece of advice to people. I know of some people who are very college educated, all of a sudden went crazy and um, are in total denial denial about it. They don't want any help. They don't want to go to groups because they know this about the groups. But I will say in the beginning stages of your illness, the groups and the therapy is really helpful to help you understand um, not just where you are at at the moment mentally, but 
also how far it can go. Like if I don't, I was thinking the whole time, if I don't do something about this, I'm going to end up in that situation. Or I was thinking like, I have been there, but I, you know, but I've been in that mental state. I know what that feels like. I don't want to be there again. I don't want to stay there. And I think a lot of the problems with people with mental illness, they think that they're right. They think that it's okay to have these reactions and it's, and it's not wrong. I'm not saying, I mean, they're people, they're just being human. But if you want to be a working person in society, you have to realize um, it, the difference in the way you are reacting to something and the way somebody else would be reacting to something. And what it means to you is different than what it would mean to somebody who is not suffering. So that goes from things that happen in your mind to the things that happen in your life. Um, for one instance, there's people who are not suffering who, um, and this is not everybody if you watch reality TV show, but the people who just are not that emotionally, um, tender, I would say. They, they um, kind of like comments will just roll off their shoulders, like whatever. And I think because it's helpful to me that I was actually normal for most of my life. I know what that is. I know what that feels like. I know, you know, how to live a normal life. I have worked before I was ill. I had worked two jobs at a time, but my life just slowly went down. And um, so the past three to five years, I have been a working person. I work both part-time and full-time jobs. I just had two jobs over the holiday season. I just quit one and I'm still working the other one. I'm now in dance competitions. I am what you would call, I should have said this in the beginning of this video, a high-functioning schizophrenic. I can do anything I want to. I don't have problems with learning things or um, being with people. I function. The problem is I just go through things in my head sometimes. I'm a little bit weird. If you ask people that know me, she's a little bit odd. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but they've said that about me my whole entire life. It's not new for me to hear that. Um, and, but I just wanted to give my little piece of advice. Start studying people um, that are not suffering. Stop focusing so much on your illness and um, what's making you worse. Like, if you could just try to put everything in the back of your mind, you just try just to let things roll off your shoulders and not get emotional about it, not give a crap what anybody says about you, but just move on from one moment to the next to get what you want done. Um, I had to apply for so many jobs before I got my first job uh, in a long time. And I did it, I mean, but it happened for me. It was the worst job, worst job you could ever have. But they promoted me. I became a manager and I learned management skills and how to manage people. So not only was I dealing with people, but how now is managing people. Um, we're capable. People with illness are capable of anything. Anything they want to do, they just have to figure out how to get in. They just have to figure out how to get in and how to stay there. And so what you're weird, somebody weird, everybody's weird. I know people right now that are not suffering, that are the weird, I'm sorry, excuse my language, but they're fucking odd ass people. I don't know 
why I'm crazy and they're not. I don't know how this is first suspect in a murder, but that is not. You know what I mean? It's like, this is weird. Like, it doesn't make sense to me, but <laughs> that's the way it is. So, yeah, don't go crazy fighting people in college and just do what you really want to do with your life and never stop trying never stop trying keep a positive attitude always keep a positive attitude don't leave, don't keep negativity in your life if anything negative comes on try to just let it roll off your shoulders I get so much negativity, but I create the positivity in my life so that it counteracts everything negative. Okay, I'm not without problems right now, but I just, you know, I got fired from a job. I'm going to go write five songs and put them on YouTube and then I'll apply for more jobs and see how far my, you know, I create a hobby or something that I can find a small amount of success in that will make me happy for myself, that will build my confidence before I start doing the things that I need to do again that I've been discouraged from. And after so many times of doing that, it just becomes a part of how you work and you're not thinking about it anymore it's just how you live your life and it's it's just not it doesn't stress me out anymore so eventually hopefully you get there but that's what my youtube channel is all about i'm trying different things on youtube i hope you like them this is really long but you cannot talk about these things in a 10 minute video is not a possibility. I'm sorry. Thank you for watching this long. Um, if you know anybody with mental illness, please share the information. Try to help them out. Try to help them out. Um, I've been going through mental illness. This will be my 10 year anniversary coming up with dealing with um, mental health issues um, in my life. And 10 years is a really long time. It's only gonna get longer. Like, eventually I'll be at 30 years and I'll only know 30 years of sanity. And I'll get to the point where I've known longer, a longer time of not being like everybody else. So, um, I think about that sometimes and um, I don't know. After 10 years, I think I'm doing pretty well. I've not been to the hospital since the beginning of my illness. I've, I've only been making progress. I've, I've not taken any steps backwards. So with that being said, I can only hope that it continues. I'm very close to remission. For example, this morning I have had nothing in my head all day long. I feel well enough to make this video. Um, I haven't. I'm in a sort of stressful part of my life. You would think somebody would be stressed about competition and not and quitting a job and not having <laughs> um, a full-time job to pay for everything and spending a lot of money. I mean, you'd think I'd be stressed out, but I just, it rolls off of me. I'll get another job. And then if I don't, I just have to quit what I'm doing right now until I make enough money to start over. It's not, nothing is such a big deal that I would have to go crazy over it. Nothing, nothing is gonna put me in that place again. I can't afford to let that happen. I can afford a lot in my life right now. I have money, but I cannot afford to 
to let that happen again. And I don't let even that stress me out. Okay. I don't know how I'm doing it. Maybe it's strength from the awful life I've lived. But I'm here. I'm still here. Uh, and I'm happy. Okay? So that's it. I've had enough. You've had enough. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.